Okay, jumping the gun today, starting a little bit earlier than uh, the uh, announced time to this morning. Good morning, everybody. How you doing? A lot to do today. So I'm uh, jumping the gun, and let's just dive right into it. I'll start off first by just thanking um, people that have picked up stuff. Hey, Hendong. Good morning, buddy. How you doing? Uh, if you if you hear your name here, uh, you, you ordered something over the last day, and... I appreciate you very much. So thank you to Bradley, James, William, Ted, Jun Wu, Logan, Christine, Anthony, Brian, Jesse, Howard, Tim, Albert, James, Keith, Jorge, Aditya, Brandon, Sean, Marvin, Jeff, Jason, Juan, Zoe, Nick, uh, Sahra, Nathan, Tyler, Stephen, David, and Ken. Thank you guys so much. Good morning, Mark and Courtney and Quan GH. So good to see you guys. If you see in the bottom of the, um, the screen here, <laughs> look at this fancy technology, uh, picture in picture. Uh, that's all the stuff that we're about to look at. It's on the table behind me. Let me flip the camera around, move the mic over there, take a look at that stuff. And uh, there's a bunch of uh, 100% black shell cordovan foxes that are beautiful. I'm really excited to show you that. Let's flip it over, take a look. If you have any questions, drop it in the chat while I uh, migrate my way over there. Um, after we look at some stuff here, I'd be happy to chat with you for a couple minutes. And then, uh, I've got a little bit of a jam packed day. I haven't filmed my video on comparing the deer skin with, um, uh, with other animal hide types just yet. I was hoping to do that today. I didn't do it yesterday cause I kind of couldn't catch my breath, which sucks. You can tell I'm still a little bit congested. All right. Johnny, the Fox here, hundred percent black shell cordovan and the cordovan that we've been getting from Horween recently some of the nicest shell around and these haven't even been polished yet we have hand stained the edges on them but we still need to wax and burnish all the edges here so they will become even nicer and then we still have to polish the shell itself with some saphire cordovan cream which is what we use on all our shell cordovan pieces so you can see this has black shell cordovan on the outside black shell cordovan on the inside all of the edges are hand stained black, including all the tops of the card holders. So it's a really sleek and clean look. We try to cut this Horween ink stamp into the bill slot on this design and they're beautiful. A bunch of people have picked them up. Thank you guys so much. Let's keep going through some other stuff on the table here. Speaking of cordovan cream, I guess we'll start there. This is the polish that we choose to use for all of our shell cordovan. Uh, after the wallets have been assembled, sewn, this is sort of the last step. We apply just a very small amount of this give it a little uh, bit of a brushing and it tends to fill in the shell very nicely and gives it a brighter, shinier luster that we, we really like. Also have a Capone money clip in English tan Dublin, some really nice Dublin here, really nice bright orangey tan shade, really great grain character, natural texture in the English tan Dublin, including this small zip here. So this small zip I noticed had some interesting striations in the grain which are not always the case. You don't always see that. Still need to trim up the threads on this wallet. And in fact, for everything, just about everything in here, we still need to do our little finishing process for most of these. So they will get even better. This is a two piece watch band in black shell cordovan. Kept a note here because this customer asked for the lug width to be 21 millimeters, which we can achieve. We actually start off with the 22 millimeters here and give it a really, really light sanding on the lugs to get this one down to 21 millimeters. So that's black shell cordovan going out. There's also hand stained edges on that black shell cordovan watch strap. Here's a vault key holder in color eight shell cordovan. This is the classic cordovan color. It's like a dark brown burgundy oxblood shade. And here's a giant the fox in that same leather. One of these going out today and it's really beautiful to see these pieces of shell for the inside. And I should have mentioned it's, it's a special day when we're able to restock something like the 100% black shell cordovan foxes because they're very difficult for us to get the naturally occurring thin pieces of cordovan for all these layers of leather here on the inside of the Johnny the Fox. We don't like to thin down leather because it ruins, in fact, it completely removes all the strength in the leather, especially on a veg tan like the shell cordovan here. So we have to be a little bit more patient and just sort through and select the naturally thin pieces of shell for the inside of the Johnny the Fox. So it's really special to see that. Also have the hand stained color eight edges on that wallet. And here's a private stock piece. This is the ultraviolet shell cordovan on the outside with a cool uh, contrasting blue stitch. And then on the inside, we have the brand new royal blue cypress with some more ultraviolet. We actually made a couple of these. I think there might be a, 
couple left still. All right, some smaller stuff here. One shot card case, also Cypress, but unlike that blue we just looked at, this is more traditional brown shade. So this is our brown Cypress one shot card case. I put these up yesterday. New Frank the Enforcers in the, uh, this is the tumbled derby deerskin. It's the tannage is called derby. It's like Horween's Dublin leather, but it gets tumbled. So you get all these crazy pebble uh, patterns in here, as well as like a little bit of a depth of color. And each of them are completely unique. I was really struck with how interesting and cool these looked uh, when the wallets were completed. It's, it's really, it's a really cool look, the derby deerskin. So I'll be doing a video, uh, hopefully filming that video today. And Frank the Enforcer here also, but this is all reverse color eight shell cordovan. So if you looked on the inside here or even behind all of these card holders, the back side of this leather is that traditional color eight shell cordovan inside of here. And if you flip it backwards, this is what it looks like on the reverse side of the shell cordovan. You get random die marks. And sometimes the color can range from a little bit of like a tan to sort of an orangey tan. And sometimes it gets a little bit red. And we do try to cut the Horween ink stamp on the back of these. You can also notice the edges have not been completed on these. So we still need to bevel this one down, give it a little wax and burnish. Some more of those uh, drawing the foxes here, 100% black shell cordovan. We'll just skim through these very quickly. They're all very, very special, uh, especially when I was telling that story about the thin pieces of shell we need for the inside. It's really nice to see more than just uh, one of these once a month. Uh, we sorted through all of our leather just to get a couple of these foxes out and check out that shell. Really nice piece of shell cordovan right here. It's pretty ca hard to capture uh, something so shiny um, in still images. So as I tilt it around in the light here, you can really see the luster on the shell cordovan. That's exactly what you want to see. Shell cordovan in its uh, normal condition is supposed to be like a mirror shine. Very, very bright and shiny, but it also has a very natural look. So it doesn't look like finish. It looks like a natural leather that is shiny. All right, more deerskin here. These are all vertical bugs. So you can, I'll just sort of compare them side by side because each of these are completely different. A very random look on the deerskin, which is why I don't think you see it very often. I think a lot of larger companies can't deal with this amount of variance because it's hard to take one image of a unique thing and then sell a bunch of them based off of that. But we do try to keep them as consistent as possible. Uh, for these vertical bugs here, but you can even on this, you can see all those pattern pieces, the leather looks a little bit different on each of them. And we'll keep flipping through more deer skin here, a little bit more subtle on this guy. Oh, this is the normal bugs Moran here, which incredible look on the interior. And I think there's two more verticals here that are also uh, super, super nice. Hey, if you're in the chat right now, I can't see it, but uh, sound off. Say good morning. Let me know, um, actually I was kind of thinking about this, will be a fun thing to ask. Let me know what leather you're carrying right now, whether it's on a wallet or some, some footwear. Uh, right now I'm wearing a Royal Blue Cypress Fat Herbie and some tan Essex brass boots from Grandstone. All right, here's an Amaretto Shell Cordovan Frank the Enforcer. This is my favorite shell color. And let's compare it to, oh, this is raw. No, this is natural Shell Cordovan. So let's compare the Amaretto to the natural. You can see the Amaretto much more orange and tan and some angles it can even appear a, look, a little bit red which is kind of interesting where the natural is much lighter more of like a taupey sort of sand color but even with this there is a range of color as you spin it around see that it's a little darker at this angle and a little bit lighter at that angle it's a pretty uh pretty special thing that directionality and color of the shell okay Speaking of natural shell, this is one of our best items for uh, for patina. This is the item that put us on the map. Fat Herbie natural shell cordovan here. Really incre incredible piece of leather, especially when you get to see the large context that we have here on the Fat Herbie. These develop a really great patina. If you want to see what this wallet looks like after years of wear, I think it's on the home page of our website. And it gets a lot darker and more golden brown. And then the luster changes as well. It gets a little bit brighter and shinier. Um, before we do the rest of the wallets, let's, let's skip over to belts. So we got some natural Chrome Excel belt here in a size 38 that is going out today. We also have a couple brown. So here's the brown. This one is also 38. 
really nice uh, leather choice here for a belt. They, I find the Chrome XL belts to be very, very comfortable. Am I speaking correctly? I find the Chrome XL belts to be very, very comfortable. And also a lot of people wear Chrome XL footwear. So something like the natural or the brown, there's a lot of natural and brown Chrome XL boots out there. This matches those pieces of footwear uh, perfectly. <coughs> All right, the last one here, the last belt is Navy Chrome XL. You can see we need to polish this guy up a bit, but the Chrome XL here, this is a good opportunity for me to show you just how nourished this leather is. See, as I move my finger across the grain here, just how much wax and oil is tanned into this stuff. It's super, super rich, which is what makes it great. You're not going to find a lot of leathers in the world that go uh, and put this much stuff into their leather. So the result is a belt or any piece of Chrome XL, a, a footwear a wallet. Uh, the result is the leather just feels very significant and very substantial, where a lot of other leathers can feel very empty, especially cheaper stuff. And it's cheaper because they didn't put, put as much in it. Okay, a couple more wallets here. Brand new Brown Cypress. I think this is a month old now, maybe a little bit more. Brown Cypress is uh, seeming to be a hit. Really nice true brown shade there. And we got a black Dublin, Johnny the Fox. Going out today, a little bit of a less dramatic amount of figuring on this specific piece of Black Dublin, but it's very nice. And on the interior, we have Black Horsehide Latigo. And then we have three uh, Johnny the Foxes and English Chain going up. All right, this one has some great character on the outside. Still need to finish up all the edges on each of these, but man, look at that. <laughs> I love the uh, when we get these random looks on the grain, this figuring here super special uh, and you can't control that you're not going to see you're not going to be able to order this leather it's sort of you get it if you get it <laughs> and this one's got a little bit of that also pretty sweet natural look on these english hand pieces looks like this one's got less of the striations but still incredible character really beautiful shade to the english hand dublin i think there's a reason uh, this has been our our best seller although over the last month i think we've sold more um or that royal blue. Okay. Oh, sorry for shaking the camera. I'm going to go back over, see what you guys are chatting about, and then we can wrap it up and I can go make some wallets, make some videos, teach you more about leather stuff, uh, and drink some coffee. Oh, man. All right. Who's here? <clears throat> my, my, uh, I feel like my, my breath is a little bit better today. I'm like, Still a little bit congested, but I just feel um, heartened. Is heartened a word? I feel um, positive about my state of improvement. It's crazy how long it's taken me to shake this cold I got. And whatever I have had, my wife got, and she works at the hospital, and she had to get a PCR test for the flu and COVID. So whatever I gave her, it's not either of those. So it's weird. Like, we don't know what this is. Maybe just some sort of other cold. Uh, cold virus but this one is like really tough to shake it's that's it's crazy and it sucks because um it's like hard to live your life it's hard to go to work when you feel sick but then your family's all sick and your your uh, like we have a nanny share like our nanny's all sick it's tough to <laughs> it's hard to like do anything when you get sick so hopefully you guys are staying healthy that's the moral of the story here oh doug castellan's here hey doug i saw you left a, a voicemail yesterday um, I got to get back to you, but what do you think about the audio setup? I've put in some, um, additional plugins onto the, uh, to the mic here. I put a, put a different, uh, channel strip run into this mic and use a little de -esser. Uh, but it sounded pretty good. How about this voiceover for Doug Castellan? <laughs> uh, Quan's wearing a stone Latigo, Johnny the Fox in a black Chrome Excel belt. Hell yeah. Jeff D, Natural Chrome XL, Tony the Ant, and Grandstone Forest Kudus. They actually, uh, those Grandstone guys offered me some Forest Kudus. I had to decline because I told them I didn't think I'd wear it. But I kind of regret that now because it looked pretty sweet. It's like a cool darker green shade. Uh, Jesse Rodriguez is wearing uh, Royal Blue Dublin and Dover Gray Tony. Oh, I remember that wallet. Man, that Gray Dover was pretty sweet with the Royal Blue. That's actually the color. I, I, I want to get a gray like that on the Cypress. Um, 
So glad you guys are here in the chat. It makes my day. This is the most fun part of the day. Um, Hendong's wearing an English tan Dublin and the dark burgundy kudu brass boots. Man, everybody's going Grant Stone. Hell yeah. Jesse Rodriguez with some Oak Street Natural Chrome Excel house mocks. Sweet. I actually just did an interview with George from Oak Street. That interview should be coming out in a week. I got to work on that. I haven't started editing that, but uh, on Monday, that interview with George is going up on Full Grain Podcast. Check out the Full Grain Podcast. We're on YouTube now. Um, I, the last episode, it doesn't seem like a lot of people want to hear some like non-leather chat in there, <laughs> but the last episode I was really happy with, with the interview of um, the bass player for a touring band uh, that I'm a fan of. Um, so check, check out Full Grain Podcast. It's great. We're trying to br we're trying to not make another stitch down. We we don't want it to be just like stitch down too, but less good because those guys are great. We're trying to make it uh, about people that are making awesome stuff. It could be leather goods, could be boots, but it could be music or anything else. We we're actually talking. We're going to try to talk to some furniture makers. Uh oh, Jaren's wearing uh you're just in socks, dude. Put on some pants. Uh, English tan Dublin belt. <laughs> He's just wearing the belt. Nice, Jaren. That's a good look. Kwan's got a English tan Apple Watch man with a nice wet look. I forgot to mention I'm wearing my. Uh, I'm still wearing the black hole horse butt Apple Watch man. It's been like a year now. I probably should switch it up. Uh, Diaz here. Good to see you, D'Angelo. You want a stealthy black wallet? Not sure which. To, hard to pick. We have two black options that are stealth. Um, one more so than the other. We, we just looked at them actually. The black shell drawing of the fox is all black everywhere, except the back side of the black shell cordovan is that green look, and it can sometimes be a little tan. So it's not like a full blacked out look, but the black Dublin foxes are black everywhere, uh, and they're much less expensive. So if you want a blacked out something, a black Dublin fox might be a good choice for you. Uh, I always lose my chat place. Bfet's here. Good morning, buddy. Crispy five five three. You're carrying a ghost cherry leather wall. Those will wear in great too. Be curious to see that. Aftab says, I love I love Johnny the Fox. Have you guys started working on a new pattern for Jumbo Fox? Um the only thing I'll I'll show you this. The only thing that I have that's like it's not a jumbo fox. But this is the only thing that we've started working on is like a coin pouch in the fox. I shouldn't show you this because I'm not sure if we want to do it because it's very difficult. There's actually like a card slot underneath that little coin pouch. Um, the problem with these is they like this little snap will like ding the other side, which is kind of a bummer. But that's a prototype if you're curious. Um, jumbo fox is something we should do. It's just like when you add so many layers of leather, we don't really like how thick it gets, but I know a lot of people like a thick wallet. So I'll think about that a little bit more. Thank you for bringing it up. By the way, everything that we've done is from customer feedback. So even if I am like kind of cold on the idea, if a bunch of people tell me, hey, I want a Jumbo Fox, I'm going to listen to you and we're going to do it. Um, so have to have, thank you for bringing that up. We have not worked on it, uh, but it's on our list. Berto, been wearing your Royal Blue Cypress Fat Herbie and Bison Leather JK Boots, carrying saddle black, back leather briefcase. Hell yeah, I got the Blue Cypress Herbie too. We're buddies. Mark, call your ash hats. You like that? Yeah. He calls us ash hats every day. This is very polite. Um, what uh, Could you do a black Dublin belt? We could. We we have, instead of done doing the black Dublin, we did a black Chrome Excel because we felt like more people wanted to match their footwear to the belt. The heavyweight, um, I guess we could do it. It's just like it's a really long wait time for heavyweights from Horween right now. Because there's only so many skins that get that thick. And we already have a bunch of leather on order. But that's a good That's a good idea. It'd be cool to do. I think, I think people have been more interested in something like this blue belt. Or even the brown cypress. So maybe I'd order the heavyweights that, of that instead. Uh, any idea when the next, okay, Jeff says, any idea when the next irregular release and next private socket re releases will be, I have, um, you can't see it. I got private stock to work on behind me here. We still need to finish them up. I have to take photos, make a video. 
that's at least two days of work. Um, but I'm trying, my goal is to get that out for Friday. That's, that's the treat you guys get for being here live with me. You get to get all the inside scoop. And I know those private socks go really fast. So this is a little bit of a value add here to be able to get it first. Um, yeah, Doug, I'm glad you like this. So this is a universal audio, uh, plugin. This is the SSL channel strip, uh, 4,000 E or something channel strip. And then I've got an 1176 compressor on the, on the back of it. I wish I could get the volume a little higher into my, um, this broadcast platform. I, I just feel like it's not loud enough. Um, so I, I might need to find it like a maximizer plugin or something. All right. More gray, please. Jesse says, got the Brown Cypress Capone learns Boulder summit boots. Nice. Oh, D, I'm glad you like the base chat. Um, people really like the dashing Chicago episode. I've had a bunch of people reach out about that and I'm, I enjoyed it too. He's man. We got some great people in the world, right? Um, but Sean is really fun and uh, knowledgeable and he's like all these people have like, I hate to, I don't want to say a lifetime, but like over decades, like 15 years of experience being around boots, you know, the guy knows something and, uh, he's not afraid to say what's on his mind, which I loved about, about Sean. So yeah, if you guys like the podcast, send it around. We appreciate it. We're not getting a lot of, it's interesting that we've sort of like hit an, uh, amount of people and like things have just stopped growing which makes me feel like we just don't have enough. Um, like I don't promote it. <laughs> That's probably the problem. I just need to promote the stuff more. Um, why don't you guys make a trifold says Chris? That's a really good question. It's again, kind of goes back to the thickness thing. It's just, um, I suppose selfishly, it's something that I don't like, but again, like if we have enough people that are saying I really would love a trifold, that's something we would do. Um, but right now I sort of shy away from trifolds cause I don't, I personally don't love them. Uh, because of how thick they get. Um, but we'll, we could do it. I'll keep that. I'll keep that tally in my mind, Chris. I've ha I haven't, I don't get a lot of people asking for trifolds, but I will do it if people love them. Oh, Jaren's fully, <laughs> Jaren's like, oh, I'm just wearing a Chrome Excel belt. All right. Well, he's fully dressed. So that's good news. And the workshop butt when it's available, uh, Quan wants a workshop butt. Yeah, I don't know if we have any more of that. You know what I want to show you? Get un untethered here. Um, check this out. So this is what I'm going to use in the video today. This is a horse butt strip. In like a, this is finished just like shell cordovan. So this is something I'm going to use as a prop in the video today to compare um, the deer skin and the cordovan and steer hide and horse fronts. Uh, but man, this is so sweet. I think we've got this here for, I don't sure. Sometimes he shows up in the chat, but this is, uh, Sherman Tan was asking for a horse butt belt. And I think that we got one that might be long enough for him. Um, just barely though. It's hard to get the horse butt strips, uh, long to make belts that are larger than like a size 30. It's a beautiful look. I wish the camera here was better for you could see it. Uh, all right, let's wrap it up here. Um, Aftab says, hope you're doing well and checked on my made order giant the Fox design, different shell choices. Let me know your thoughts on it. Uh, I have to look that up. Uh, I'm looking it up right now if I can find it. Uh, I found it. You've got an epic natural, epic raw natural on the outside. And then see email for details on the inside. Uh, I have to talk to my brother about that. I'll talk to him. I'll let you know. Coin pouches for grandma who carries coins in their wallets. I don't either LA, but that's a really good comment. Uh, a lot of people that do not live in the United States, carry coins. Um, especially in Japan where people love what we do. And in Europe, we get 
requests from people that want coin pouches in Europe. It's, I think it's kind of crazy too, because I don't even use paper money. I do carry it, but it's, it seems to be like a rare time where I'm like, oh, thank God I had a dollar to, to give somebody. Um, and yeah, that's a coin pouch on one side. Are the Chrome Excel belts made from cows or horses? The belts, especially, uh, so this is something I'll do in the video today too. The thickness of each animal hide is significant. Uh, the difference is significant. Horse fronts can be only about like two to three ounces thick. And to give you a sense, the belts are three times, more than three times that. Belts we want around like nine or 10 ounces thick. And you can only get thicker belts like that in a consistent thickness for that long of a piece on jumbo steer hides, very specifically jumbo steers. Cow hides, you only get about four ounces. Bison, you only get about four ounces, four and a half maybe in some sections. Uh, you can get a little thicker, but there's like this hump on the bison that's thin. Um, and somebody's here at the door. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna head out. Yep. Uh, I mentioned your meeting with George from Oak Street. Was it for the podcast? Yeah, you can watch a podcast next week, BFET. It'll come out in a week. A hurry breeze good enough for back pocket, uh, thin enough. Uh, I love this. This is the best back pocket wallet around. All right, I got to go, guys. You got somebody coming to see me.